The World Health Organization is holding another emergency meeting this morning to discuss the Ebola outbreak. This is the CDC increases its response to the highest level. NBC's chief medical editor, Dr. Nancy Snyderman, has more. Dr. Nancy, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Yes, the CDC has ratcheted up its warning level because now this is the longest and deadliest Ebola outbreak in history. And while normally contained, this one has popped up in enough countries now that we're talking about it as a global threat. In Geneva this morning, an emergency meeting of the World Health Organization as experts determine whether the Ebola outbreak now qualifies as a public health emergency. This, as the CDC's Emergency Operations Center, elevates its response to the highest level, level one, reallocating staffers to focus on containing the outbreak. Now spreading throughout West Africa, where the WHO reports over 900 people have died from the disease. The outbreak started in March in Guinea, moving on to Liberia and Sierra Leone, then recently jumping from Liberia to Nigeria's capital of Lagos, a major population center and an international travel hub. Ebola's reach now extends beyond West Africa. In Saudi Arabia, a patient suspected of having Ebola died Wednesday after traveling back from Sierra Leone. Test results are expected within a day or two. Those two American aid workers infected in Liberia are now receiving treatment in the U.S. And a Spanish missionary priest who tested positive for Ebola was medevaced from Liberia to Spain, the first Ebola patient treated in Europe. In Atlanta, Dr. Kent Brantley and Nancy Wrightbull remain in isolation at Emory University Hospital. NBC News has learned that patients are in rooms on two sides of Emory's isolation unit. Doctors change into protective gear here, and family members are able to visit through the glass. Just one day after the ambulance ride seen round the world, NBC's Kate Snow rode in the vehicle used to transport both Wrightville and Brantley with lead paramedic Gail Stallings. The two patients, did they talk to you? They did. They were both talking to us. I think we had this image that they were going to be like unconscious. I think I think that's the biggest misconception with so much of it. We assume the movie Contact and Outbreak, and we assume everybody's going to be these horror show near zombie people that are, you know, going to take reality. over the world, and it's, and it's not anywhere close to that. The paramedics say Nancy Wrightbull wore several protective layers, clothing, a hazmat suit, face mask, and another non-permeable layer. And the ambulance itself was lined with plastic, later removed and incinerated before the entire vehicle was decontaminated twice. For the paramedics, transporting the two patients was just part of the job. For us, this is what we do. This is what we train for. This is, this is our job. This is one of those times that I think everyone can be proud of the Centers for Disease Control. We've talked in the past about a little black eye for them, but the American government, you guys, has really stepped up, and the CDC has globally orchestrated the response. And so this raising the, the level is to get people and supplies into the affected area. If you can put out this wildfire, you, we can stop this. But right now we're seeing little sparks pop up around the world, and that's what has everyone talking. So the CDC is raising the level so it can respond worldwide, not because exactly. it perceives the threat to the U.S. It has pulled people off of other teams and said, Ebola is now your job. We'll put influenza on the back tape burner for right now. All right, Nance, thank Smart. you so much.